Welcome to the program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Thank you for watching. Um, tonight I'm going to talk about uh, the dual, uh, the, um, the number that makes two, okay? And because there are so many different ways of saying the same thing in different cultures, but I actually detect a very interesting pattern. Tonight I'm going to compare, as usual, you know, between very ancient uh, language system and also between very, uh, some so-called modern language system. So you see that we all have a very common core sound, and those core is what I, I, I believe that it was from a very, very ancient source. So each uh, family is not a tree. Each family is just a branch from the same organism, as the program uh, name uh, indicates. So I'm going to start from the beginning of the slide. Here it is. Okay. Yes. This is the basket starfish, and you, as you can see, this is the core that we share. Each one of us come out from the same time, uh, back in very, very ancient time. And uh, only when we look at each other in that way, believing each of us is just a branch of the same organism, then we will be able to treat each other equally instead of having all this hierarchy, who is before, who is after, okay? So I think that we are needed to be changed. We need to see you know a human language as a very on a uh, very equal ground and of course you know I've been saying that you know I uh, present to you uh, from an Asian point of view instead of from a Western point of view and tonight uh, we are going to look at the duo and you can look at it as a twin or you can look at it as a couple and the idea of the two is actually came from the very idea of fertility because the ancient understood it you know if you uh, have to uh, multiply, you do need two entity, and then uh, the beginning of fertility, you have more a member of the tribe, and if you are herder, you have more animals. So it's all about you know a multiplication of increasing the number. So uh, it's interesting enough when you look through the development of these words, you can actually see the remnants of the earliest domestication of plant and animal in human history and um, the dual uh, form actually I have found that they actually uh, appear in different forms sometimes they use the D sometimes because the interchange between D and T and as you said the T the two right the, the duo the T and then of course the by thing started with the B and then also uh, the pair always started with the P the B and P you will see that it's always coming from the idea of the pair of feet that human being have okay so it also uh, uh, multiplied you know to the also the Z as well but today I'm not going to concentrate on any of these letters I'm only going to concentrate in the M uh, letter so have you ever wonder why M has a sound of M if you need to spell it out you have to put a, a vowel in front of it it then it becomes M right so and interesting enough, all this M, N, M, N, as I, I show you uh, in the last couple of episodes, it's always, you know, the suffix in a lot of ancient languages, you know, to show the uh, the the, the duo or the plural, you know, as the two becomes uh, multiply more and more. It seems that human being in different uh, culture started also to use them as a plural suffix. Sometimes that it is also used as a prefix okay so but today other than hearing all this m sound at the end of the word as a suffix or the prefix and you will also uh, i mean i will also look into the sound of a very direct ma sound okay it all come from the m so uh, let's uh, ignore all this at the uh, beginning let's look at the m okay look at the word match of course the, when you talk about a match you know there are two ways you can look at it as i uh, keep saying that words are very interesting. Human words always have a polar meaning. Uh, that means they always go to the direction of something uh, good or they always go to the direction of something bad. They always go to two extremes, okay? So if you uh, look at the word match, you can imagine people fighting in a duet or you can actually, you know, imagine people in a very uh, uh, harmonic sense, you know, as making friends, as a duo, okay? Okay. 
or, or, or they are actually playing a uh, kind of music, uh, instru uh, a musical instrument, you are still calling it a duet, but it is a very peaceful sense. So the word match actually goes to two direction, and of course match also to do with marriage too, right? So you can hear also the word marriage, why is it always uh, with the ma sound? Uh, as I explained on, you will pay more and more attention uh, later on. I hope you can also hear it when people speak to you. It's a very interesting phenomenon. It is a, actually a pattern came down from very ancient time. And um, if uh, a lot of the people actually uh, always look to the Greek culture, so I started with a picture of the Greek culture. This is the what they call the Minoan, Minoan uh, culture from the Greek island uh, of Greeks. Okay, so uh, you can see that very obviously uh, people actually uh, use a very interesting visual uh, picture. You can see that very easily that, that these two boys are actually fighting each other uh, and the word itself actually in Greek is actually uh, pronounced as mahi but visually the Greek actually put an X there exactly as these two boys are forming. They are actually doing a combat or doing a battle and you will see that this uh, why the word battle or combat is, has to do with the B. I can only tell you that they are because, you know, they are different variety of meaning. The subtle meaning is that they actually tell you very clearly that this um, conflict is only between two parties. So it's something to do with the B, as you say, the by, okay, with the two foot as an image in their head. So also the combat, you know, you, when you see these words, in ancient time, they actually knew it, it is only between two parties. And of course, you know, if you go to the old Greek, ancient Greek, they actually use a word uh, polymos uh, to mean actually a, a, a war, a real war. And, and the first beginning is started with pol, pol, poly, okay? You you know that the politics and actually comes from also the Greek word poly. The poly actually means a lot of parties. So you will see that uh, to distinguish between two party fighting and also a lot of party fighting, they actually use different words. And but you as you can see the Greek word here, mahi, they actually use a very interesting visual sign to show the, the ancient people. But, but as as time went by, we no longer uh, able to read those very subtle signs, but the ancient without reading, they can actually read the pictures as you can see. And I will show you a very interesting um, phenomenon when I compare this Greek picture and the Greek writing with other languages, okay? This is a Phoenician and this is a Sumerian cuneiform. You can see that you clearly see two parties uh, actually coming towards each other, but compare this to the ancient uh, way, okay? Uh, this is one way of writing it, this is the other way of writing it as a conflict, okay? This is also Sumerian um, cuneiform. Look at the cross right here too. The uh, ancient already seem to agree to use this form to mean uh, someone crossing each other. As you can see right here, right here on the picture, and right here if on the Greek, but look at the Chinese writing right there. The Chinese writing is actually look very much like the ancient Sumerian right there. And then you can see again the crossing of the arm. Actually, from until this very day, you know, in colloquial uh, Chinese, uh, to fight, we actually say cross the hands. Then we actually means to fight, as this picture actually um, uh, tells you right there. But the sound right there in Chinese is actually Dao exactly the duet right there, okay? But now I ignore the sound, but I just only compare the, the picture, okay? The Chinese have this word to show fighting, and they we also have this very interesting word. When we use this word alone, it actually means a very, uh, on, on the very peaceful sign, it, um, it actually means, you know, um, sexual intercourse, or someone crossing each other as making friends. 
But if you look at the ancient Chinese dictionary, this word itself actually has a very interesting explanation. It means crossing the lower leg. Look at this. Actually, I found the same thing in the Indian temple. When they are trying to show a lot of love scenes on the temple, a lot of these people were making love. They were actually crossing their legs. Interestingly, the explanation happened in the Chinese dictionary, and the word itself actually means you know, uh, a very good way, peaceful way in crossing, okay? But if we add something in, in, uh, uh, in front of it, we can also manipulate the word to mean uh, fighting as well. But as you can see, the uh, crossing de definitely can mean something good or something bad, okay? So, of course, you know, you can look at the English word sex. And why is the X right there? And it already tells you that even the English, you know, used somehow a visual form to remind themselves what they are talking about and also the English word mix you know again you know this is when someone mix with each other they are actually crossing each other but I want you to concentrate to today you know other than show you you know the different pictures different cultures also use visual symbol visual clues to tell themselves what they are looking at and but this time I am concentrating on the mark me sound to show the party of two okay and let's look at the next slide and first of all, how do we define writing? And I think the modern education system is always through a very narrow Western lens. And for them, you know, writing is very limited to only lines that scratch, you know, on top of a surface. But uh, to the Eastern cultures, writings is actually everywhere. Just as I show you those pictures, those statues, you know, in front of the temple, they are for the ancient, a kind of of communication so don't you call it writing the West of course they don't call it but why is the whole world following only one very narrow lens to define ourselves and uh, what I worry about is that because of we define ourselves so much under the Western lens we are the East are actually taught to be ashamed of our own culture and again and again uh, we actually gave up our own interpretation of a lot of things and and when the elders of the East, East, uh, Eastern world explain something, we always ignore them until a Westerner says something and we, they write down something. Then in reverse form, we actually be, be, uh, be educated by the West, you know, of our own Eastern culture. This is something I am not agree with. And this is exactly why I am doing this program, okay? So again, I will say that the ancient writing were everywhere. We just don't read it like the modern Western people do. But remember, the West also read the same way in ancient time, okay? So uh, writings are always in the written form. I will show you again a lot of the um, Indian temples look at this and look at this Chinese writing and and this Chinese writing is has a lot to do with giving birth okay the word uh, you know one of the sound is, has to do with mean the other sound is fun it always have to do with fertility and giving birth okay but look at this form right here and this form right there of course you can also look at it as the tent as well what is happening inside inside the tent but in ancient time they look at the house as the female body okay so this is actually uh, understood across boundary of the very limited words the the western are uh, giving us okay so this is a egyptian hieroglyph this is a pet sound okay so but if you put the two together it's exactly the same thing too when it give um when the form like this, you will actually give you the Greek form, the P. Remember the P in a mathematical formula, it is actually an infinity. You know, the P actually, or you can say it the pi, the pi is actually, uh, you know, means infinity. But what infinity the ancients were looking at, they were looking at uh, the very, very infinity of the fertility on Earth, okay? So uh, if you look at this, uh, 
you can also look at the whole temple. Actually, the whole temple, the statue are full of different writings that the ancients could understood. They don't read words like we modern people do. They actually read in their own way that I can show you this. And this is actually I read the Celtic form of looking at the same thing. Look at this form right there and look at this form right there, okay? I can show you the early writing as again, you know, this is the uh, Southern Arabian, the F. Again and again, I show you it stood for the fam as the mouth, okay? And this is ancient uh, Hebrew. This is the per as the mouth. Look at this. This is just the F and the P is the sound interchange between these two brothers, the Hebrew and the Arabic and then um, the mouth is actually put in a two different form but if you look at this mouth if you look at this form right there you understand it perfectly it has a lot to do with the mouth of birth okay so um, I will compare another very uh, common picture in the ancient time and then uh, the uh, Western scholars always call this uh, image the master of animals okay because it happened all over the ancient world but I will show you a Chinese writing again for us this pronounce as Tai Tai is the uh, ancient emperor and of course it also means God as well and this has the sound of Man Man as you can see that has a lot to do with splitting into two gradually it has a lot to do with twins the production of twins look at this you know because sometimes you look at the picture you can actually write uh, understand it in different form according to the context. So the Western way of having definition, one definition is a very dangerous thing because in ancient in the ancient world, one writing or one form actually have multiple explanations, okay? So now let me compare uh, the Chinese writing with the ancient um, Sumerian again. Uh, this has the form, uh, this has the sound of Tai or Di and this is has the, the pronunciation pronunciation of dinghy and look at this this also for them is God okay but if I split it you know the sound is actually very similar if you look at this form you can actually look at it in, a, in as a ligature of already two forms the pep for them you know means the first and the foremost and of course you know this is already a, a patriarchal world you know they took over and then they explain it as the male they explain explain it as the father's sign okay but this form in the ancient Sumerian as has the son of Marsh and it actually means twins okay but when you put the two together of course it's a two element and then they become actually this form you know because if the ancient uh, belief the God it cannot be a star because if you explain the, a lot of the explain, explanation is that it's a star imagine the ancient how can they they believe their God just as a star he, it should be much bigger than just a star right and so this should not be a star itself it is a concept of two ligature as a twin concept you know two uh, uh, of course this twin in this case is a couple uh, the male and the female part and then the f first and the foremost it become that part but I want you to compare this song as a twin this is a twin this is a twin look at that this is man this is ma look at that even the sound is almost identical already in ancient time okay so you can through these two slides you can uh, actually see that the ancients actually write in a very different way from uh, than the modern form okay so the ancient also you always use the visual language, as I already explained how they uh, explain the worm to get and link with the food, how the word gamos, you know, gradually become the marriage, you know, become the duo form, and then the Chinese actually put two together, and then how this um and the ma sang actually become, you know, you, your understanding of the mate and the mating, the of the two, and then the companion, the friend, and the twin, because the two can 
can be anything, you know, between. So the sound is very important instead of writing, okay? Because a lot of the ancient do not write, you know, they look at pictures, they speak, okay? And have you ever wonder why the Sanskrit karma, come? you understand the Kama Sutra, karma is the uh, word for love because, you know, it, the Ma Sang is actually a very important component in that. In Sanskrit, Kama is love, Yama is a pair, Sama is also a pair or together. It actually shifts to this, what you call the Semitic uh, world. Jama is actually the sexual act or the Gama is also the other way of pronouncing it in a dialectic way in the Semitic world or Gama can be pronounced in the, in the, in the Greek world as you know the world of you know the marriage so you will see the karma yama sama jama karma all this the identical part is the ma part which has always a very subtle uh, indication of the number two okay so uh, i can assure you that in the very beginning just like a baby we learn how to speak a lot of the things were monosyllable as time went by you know the chinese still maintain our monosyllable world okay as time went by, when we invented writing, it's always with the audio part and the visual part to help them to, to remember what it is, okay? So the mate, you know, the M part is very important. That's the same, the word match, you know, in the uh, English world. And then uh, you will see that why the English word mix and sex and fix has the symbol of X, because the X is actually the visual part to remind the people what you you are dealing with. So the whole world is actually functioning the same way, but we are just picking up different things at a different time. So uh, let's continue looking at it, okay? The twins, of course, as I said, there's um and im and in and also the ma sang, just let's compare them, okay? The Sumerian has this man as a as a couple, it means a couple or the two or a partner. And the Chinese has man as as, as the sang and it always carries the meaning of two. And then the Sumerian continue of this ma very directly, they they have the meaning of the twin and then Look at this ma in Chinese. We put the two uh, two person or two sons together. It means ma, and uh, colloquially it still means the twin. Okay, so all this ma men marsh ma uh, marsh, all this song all means a twin in a different form. Okay, so now let's look at the world's languages. Let's look at the smallest part. Let's not even looking at the words. Just look at the preposition you don't normally pay attention to. The preposition means with together or during when two things happen side by side, okay? Or when, when things are the same or when things are the same as, okay? So look at this. Uh, Hebrew is im. Arabic is ma. G uh, Greek is me or mit. And then the German is mit. And then the Russian is mesh, mitz. And then the Icelandic is met. And then the Norwegian is met. All these, look at this, these are different family according to the scholars, okay? So they are all using the same sound even in the smallest preposition to mean the same thing. You think we don't share a very common core? Okay, the Maui, even you're looking at oceanic languages, the Me and the Hawaiian Me, all these are the preposition with all this meaning, either with together or during, okay? And then the French Me, it means the same. Italian mentre means during, and Spanish mientras, and the Latin will have cum, dum, cum, all this um, 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 all have all this preposition meaning. This is the smallest component of a language, okay? So the why you, I'm to again talking about uh, recently, I look at this, uh, this Indians in the northern part of Colombia, you know, and Venezuela. Even they, you know, have a very interesting language. Even ma is used as the same as. And then the piema, we, we used uh, meaning two or the duo. Look at this ma part. Other than that, they are also already a composite language. The p in this part also separately, you can use it to mean the two, two, okay? As a pair, okay? So the piemale means both. So all this language, all from the east and west, north and south, they are all using the same song uh, as a 
preposition to mean the same thing. Why is this phenomenon phenomenon so? You explain to me. If I am presenting to you from an Asian point of view, I travel around. You know, I travel around. I use my ear to travel. I don't. I am not limited by all this grammatical things that we've been taught again and again. Okay. So again, the twin. And again, I show you these pictures. And other than that, we have the gim. You know, you can see very clearly one hand collecting two, two uh, stalks right, right there. And then this is a hard G gim. Okay, the Latin, the same spelling, the German is, but already it changed to a J. And then the Spanish, because the same spelling, but because of the uh, modern writing, it already pronounced as gemelos. And but then the Spanish actually uh, uh, saved this word, mellizos, uh, okay? This is also means twin. All the words you see all means twin. Look at this. No matter how you look at it, how you flip them around, the Sanskrit, jampati, actually means a couple. And then the Sanskrit, yama, a twin. And then the French, look at this. They already actually adopted the jade writing, jumu and jumeli, and actually means a twin. And gamin, they present Reserved, the heart sound means a younger brother. Then still the two together, okay? The English, of course, I want you to look at this word James. You know, this is very important because, you know, when you look up the word James, they actually give you the explanation of Jacob. That actually uh, points to one thing very, very interesting. The interesting thing is that the ancient Chinese and the Hebrew actually has a very interesting relationship. Jacob, if you, if you look at the word James, they tell you the explanation of Jacob. They don't explain you to. Uh, they don't explain to you James as a twin. Let me um, stop right here. I will. Okay. Oh. Okay, let me stop right here. I will explain that to you in a different way. Uh, they don't explain to you James as a twin. They explain to you at the meaning of Jacob, you know, catching from behind. But if you look at the Chinese uh, dictionary, the sound cup as the Jacob, okay, actually means reaching from behind. As you could see from the picture, the picture is actually a person, you, as a hand catching from behind. Why is it so? You look at it again. Look at this picture right there. The Chinese writing is actually explaining the bi biblical story. So this is something very interesting. I would like to continue next week, okay? But this week, I hope you can get what I'm trying to tell you that why is this M sound or the Ma sound is used by the whole world's different language family, as they said, you know, to mean a twin 